I'm not entirely convinced of your aptitude to handle this situation. Oh yeah? F*** you. Hey guys, Stefan here. Have you ever gotten excited for a game and they just completely forgot about it? Well, it happened with me and Quantum Conundrum. I remember seeing the trailer for it just after playing Portal 1 in 2011 and I immediately wanted to play it. But seeing as it wasn't out yet, there wasn't really anything I could do but wait. Well, fast forward to 2019 and I got it on sale on Steam for a dollar. Eight years. Yep, I'm the king of waiting. Needless to say, I bought the game immediately. But it also got me thinking about what happened to it. I mean, Portal was such a hit when it came out, and this game certainly looked like a fun new take on the puzzle platformer genre. But it didn't achieve the same level of success and popularity as Portal did. With that said, let's take a look at if Quantum Conundrum is worth playing in 2019. Quantum Conundrum is a fun and challenging puzzle game developed by Airtight Games and published by Square Enix in June of 2012. Playing it will certainly remind you of this one other puzzle game you might have heard of, and for good reason. This game is directed by Kim Swift, a former Valve employee and the lead designer for the first Portal game. And that expertise she brought to the table really does show. The game starts off with you, a 12-year-old kid, being dropped off by your neglectful mother at the house of your crazy scientist uncle and possibly the worst babysitter ever, Professor Fitz Quadrangle, who's voiced by John Delancey, the guy who played Q in Star Trek The Next Generation. Not long after you've arrived, something happens and your uncle gets transported into another dimension. Now it's up to you to use your uncle's invention and take advantage of the different dimensions to solve puzzles and hopefully save your uncle from his current predicament. And you would think that he'd be thankful for you trying to save him, but nope, your uncle's an asshole. Clearly your parents have been raising you splendidly. But more on that later. The main star of this game is the interdimensional shift device, a glove that lets you control abilities from four different dimensions. First, you have the fluffy dimension, which makes everything 10 times lighter and softer. This ability will help you lift heavy objects so you can carry and throw them. Maybe at your uncle's face? That'll do for now. Next, you have the heavy dimension, which makes everything 10 times heavier and sturdier. Using this ability will make objects immune to lasers and make even usually light objects heavy. Hopefully that makes it more painful when you throw it at your uncle's face. Oh, I really don't like him. There's also the slow dimension, which makes everything 10 times slower. It's really helpful to use when you need makeshift platforms for you to jump on, or when you need more time to avoid or go over obstacles. Also really helpful if you want to stop your uncle from avoiding your throws. I can't wait to save you so I can hit your face. And lastly, the reverse gravity dimension, which makes everything taste like bacon. <laughs> Just kidding. It reverses gravity, obviously. You can use it to levitate objects that you can then ride so you can get to the next area. I can also think of another useful application. No, 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 no! Ah! These four abilities, which you can use independently but not combined, will help you solve all of the puzzles inside your annoying uncle's house. You'll discover each of them one at a time, and you'll be able to use them as long as the area that you're in has the battery for it. The battery is usually already lodged in the power receptacle, but there are areas where you have to find the batteries first before you can use your abilities. Usually, they're easy to spot as they're being held hostage by Ike, an interdimensional kinetic entity. Which I think is supposed to be cute, but <laughs> cute is subjective, I suppose. Quantum Conundrum's gameplay is so good. The level design in each area is top-notch, and the puzzles are so fun and challenging. Solving each puzzle requires you to know which abilities to use and getting the right timing to use them. Knowing what to use isn't a problem really since most areas only give you access to the abilities that you need, and the slow dimension usually helps with timing. Most of the time. The game has a good learning curve, and the difficulty of the puzzles do increase as you move further into the game, but its terrific puzzle design ensures that the puzzles are not only fun and challenging, but also not impossible to solve. Quantum Conundrum honestly was such an amazing game to play, and it deserved the high rating it got from critics. So why didn't it become as popular as Portal? Why did the Portal series have a combined total sales of 23 million copies sold, while Quantum Conundrum only managed to sell a bit over 200,000? 
Well, I have a few theories as to why. First reason I think is that it's not as memorable as Portal. Portal stuck with you because of a number of things. Because of the iconic portal gun, because of Aperture Laboratories, because of the cool robot designs, because of GLaDOS, because of cake, freaking cake, a cake so memorable it turned into a meme that made it more popular. I honestly found out about Portal because I saw one of the cake is a lie meme, got curious and researched and found out about the game. All of those made Portal really memorable. While in Quantum Conundrum, you're in a not so memorable house, using a weapon you can't even see, being guided by your crappy uncle in a bargain plushie. Apart from the great gameplay, nothing really sticks with you after you finish the game. Next reason as to why I think it didn't become as big as Portal is the writing. The writing in this game really felt like it was trying to become Portal too much that it kind of didn't make sense. One of the key reasons as to why people loved Portal so much is GLaDOS, the murderous AI that took every opportunity to belittle Shell, the main character in the game. GLaDOS was written so brilliantly and its witty lines and insults really made the game more enjoyable to play. Quadrangle, your uncle, also belittles and insults you throughout the game, but it's not as enjoyable because the dynamic is different. Gladys insults and makes fun of Shell because she's trying to escape, and Gladys doesn't want her to succeed. In fact, she wants her dead. While in Quantum Conundrum, your uncle talks to you in the same way, despite the fact that you're trying to save him. And it's not like it's your fault that he's stuck in another dimension, so there's no real reason as to why he's talking to you like that, apart from him just being a gigantic asshole. Which really makes you wonder why this kid's mother left him alone with this guy. Nice job. No, not really. F you. Last reason I believe as to why it's not as big as Portal is because it came out after Portal 2. Portal 2 is hands down one of the greatest puzzle games ever made and one of the best video games of all time. It took what made the first one special and added more to it. Better puzzles, fantastic story, more lovable characters. Portal 2 did everything a good sequel should, and I think people, who wanted more puzzle goodness, played Quantum Conundrum expecting the same level of quality and generally got underwhelmed with some aspects of the game, then wrote it off as an unsuccessful Portal clone. Which is sad, because on its own, Quantum Conundrum really is a good game. Despite these reasons, Quantum Conundrum is still a great game to play, and definitely worth picking up especially if it's on sale. Its great reviews, despite having these problems, really just speaks for how outstanding and enjoyable the gameplay is. The dimension shifting mechanic is really unique and entertaining to use, and the 6-8 to eight hours of gameplay filled with creative puzzles will surely be worth the bargain price tag. If you like puzzle games and you've played and enjoyed the Portal series, then you'll certainly like this game as well. Just don't expect Uncle Quadrangle to be as fun to be with as GLaDOS was. Huh, I wonder what happens if I press this. What the fuck?